it's looking a little naked up here. Welcome back friends and welcome to the roof of our trailer. It's looking quite sparse at the moment. We had to take all four panels off and remove the ladder rack that was right here in order to prep the roof of the trailer for our new rack and new panels. Uh, we're going to see how this install goes. Uh, the people who are coming to install it, uh, the welder, um, they got off work I think at 3, 3.45. It's like 4 o'clock right now and we only have like another hour and a half of light and there's supposed to be another rainstorm tonight. So I was a little skeptical as to whether or not we're actually going to have this happen uh, today. But he said he is coming and I figured well, you know, even if he doesn't come at least I can prep the roof. Because um, it took me a few hours to get the roof prepped the way that I want it prepped. Uh, originally I was going to have them help uh, prep it and that would have been perfectly fine. But um, uh, you know, you want to do things the way you want to do it. And so it took some time this afternoon and was able to get an extra hand from Corral, um, our friend here at the farm, and get her done. So we'll see what happens. The evening procession into the barn. Andy, I'm taller than you. And with Habib bringing it up the rear, taking his sweet, sweet time. I really can't get over how empty this roof looks. I don't know if you guys understand, but when your entire home, like, pull the plug off of the grid and you have no more electricity, like, that's what the roof is for us. It's our electricity, and it's just gone. I mean, it's just so bare up there. It's like we just picked the trailer up. It's like back to brand new. So these are the panels that we pulled down. This has been our power production for seven months, eight months. We ran them in a 2S2P configuration, two parallel, two series um, for 1400 watts. And like just yesterday, actually, we were pulling in 1100 watts, which is crazy during February, um, but uh, yeah, that was, that was great. Um, hoping to double that once we get our new panels up. You know guys, I don't know if this is gonna happen today, to be honest. They said they're gonna show up over an hour ago. You know, it's one thing if they're just coming to like do some work for me, uh, yada yada, but I mean, they had me disconnect my home from its source of power. And, uh, you know, on top of that, when I first contracted these guys, uh, the agreement was they were actually going to help me take everything down off of there because I didn't know if uh, LZ was going to be able to help me with that because um, those panels are a little heavy and it was a little awkward getting them down. Fortunately, we had another hand to, to help us with them. We were able to get them down. Um, so, like, I went ahead and I disconnected my whole home from its power source and it's also it's a rain shelter to some regard and now it's going to rain and who knows so the welders did eventually end up showing up uh later in the, the evening it's starting to get pretty dark but you know kudos to them they showed up and uh they started getting things installed i mean we got pretty far that night uh, we actually got the whole rack uh, laid out off of their uh, truck that they brought it in and we took all the panels and I wanted to make sure before we actually put everything up that those panels did indeed fit perfectly because they didn't make it on site. Uh, they had the measurements but they didn't make it on site and you know great work by them it actually fit perfectly and uh, much better than what I could do. I have stuff in front of me and I still sometimes can't get the measurements right. Um, and if I sound stuffed up it's uh, the cat's fault uh, which I'll explain more about the cat in the next video um and <laughs> kitty <laughs> what are you doing uh, <laughs> yeah thank you so once we knew that they actually did fit correctly we got it up and on top of the roof and we're able to go around and start installing it uh, i think there was something like 56 holes had to be put into the side of the roof, uh, put it into the black strip that runs the perimeter of the roof. We ran into a couple issues and I warned them about these issues um, so that they had to come back another day because of this, but um, their front two supports were way too close to, they're on top of where the running light is and I, I can't move the running light, the running light needs to be there. Um, and then the back uh, supports were actually right where the 
ladder is, and I told them I'm not removing the ladder, but they put a support right where the ladder actually is on the back of the trailer. Um, and so they had to chop off the back two supports and uh, come back um, later and weld them in. And then the front ones, we had to shift the whole rack backwards to, to clear them, and that worked out okay. Um, and so they got them all drilled in. It was really, it was really funny. I had warned, um, I had warned them before time that it's really, really difficult to drill into this trailer. I don't know why. I mean, it's steel, yes. But, uh, you know, I told them initially, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's steel. Like, we, we drill into steel all the time. You know, no problem. <laughs> they didn't believe me. Yeah, you didn't believe me. All right. <laughs> Is uh, Jesus and Brian were the, the two welders, or brothers, and, and uh, Jesus made Brian do all the drilling and all the screwing, and poor Brian had to sit there and really uh, screw in. We broke several drill bits. Um, I mean, 56 holes, it's, it's a lot of drilling to do. Um, but yeah, we got the whole rack installed, and then a couple days later, um, uh, one of the uh, Airbnb guests uh, here at the farm uh, was kind enough to, uh, Steve was kind enough to come help me, and uh, the three of us were able to, to get the panels on up there, and I started screwing those in. So it was like an L track that runs the whole length that sits on top of the new rack um, and is welded to the rack, and I'm basically just screwing three bolts, uh, stainless steel bolts, uh, through the L track into the panel siding and then uh, three on each side, so the six total per panels. And that was part of the problem with the design is we knew we were gonna have an overhang on the front. Um, ideally, we needed a 20-foot trailer. Um, the 18-foot just isn't big enough to fit six of these big panels all the way down. No matter what configuration I did, this is actually the shortest configuration uh, going uh, side to side with the panels. Um, so no matter what configuration I did, that's just kind of how it ended up. And initially, we we're going to have almost a two foot overhang in the front. Um, but because we had to shift the whole rack back, it ended up being more like a foot, a foot and a half. And then we have about a foot or so in the rear. And initially, I didn't want to extend the rear at all because that actually extends the whole length of the trailer when the truck is on. Whereas if we're overhanging on the front, it's already accounted for the length of the vehicle because it's attached to to us and there's no risk of that hitting the truck at all or anything um, so that's why I initially wanted to go two feet more in the front and only like a couple inches just enough to clear um, the light and uh, yeah the lights the ramp supports and uh, the rear view camera in the back um, but we, we hang over more in the back now which isn't the biggest deal in the world at all. So overall, we went from 1400 watt hours, which I thought was going to be a crazy amount of power when we first uh, designed the system and got on the road. And we quickly learned that it's great during the summer, um, even in the mountains during the summer when you don't have a full day of sun because of the mountains, um, it's perfectly fine. But the second we had a cloudy day, we ran into trouble because we don't have a lot of battery. Um, so really we would need two to three times the amount of battery capacity to make it through a two, three, four day of, of clouds. Um, and that just wasn't really practical, um, uh, both space-wise and budget-wise. Each of those batteries are like a thousand bucks. Um, and even if you have more battery, that's then gonna take a really long time to charge those batteries all the way back up, if you even can, depending on how many cloudy days you have. And then winter hit, and we had to run the generator so much uh, this winter from December through like February, um, quite a bit because, you know, sunny Southern California, yeah, it's sunny now, uh, but geez, it has not been anything but sunny. It was so cloudy, so rainy, all the atmospheric rivers. I mean, you can watch our playlists that we have of all these problems we're having with leaks, and it's just because we're just getting dumped on rain-wise for months on end. It was relentless. Um, 
But since having these guys, we've had a couple days of clouds and we've had a few days of rain. And what's great is we either will charge all the way back up to 100% on a cloudy day, or like yesterday, it was very rainy the whole day. It was enough to cover our usage and still put some back into the battery. So we didn't hit 100%, but we were able to keep doing things like we normally would. You know, I boiled water with the electric kettle several times yesterday. Um, you know, kept the lights on, ran computers, like charged things up, used microwave, the fridge is going, you know, everything, we just don't have to think about it anymore. And that was why we had to do this project is we were having to look at the phone app and check power every few hours to make sure that, oh, can I turn the lights back on? Or do I need to use our backup 12 volt lights that run off a separate battery system? Um, and we don't have to do that anymore. Um, now it's just about a curiosity of like, oh, what time today are we going to be reaching 100%? And we're finding that on a sunny day, with lots of usage that we'll go through, we'll hit 100% sometimes by 11 o'clock. And this is in the beginning of March. We're hitting that at 11 o'clock. So I can't even imagine uh, how great it's going to be <laughs> during summer. I bet we're going to charge up by like 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. And that's okay that then we, we aren't putting the rest of that power throughout the day into a battery system because we will be using power and we'll be using directly from the sun, not from the batteries. And that's gonna help us uh, with longevity of the battery as well because we're not gonna be going through as many charge discharge cycles. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, we're running a uh, 2S 3P. So there's three parallel lines six panels total so two panels are in series within each parallel line and i had to do it that way based on um, just uh, the inverter we're using i had to switch our inverter our inverter that we used before was a growatt uh, 24p which is a 24 volt system and we had to upgrade it to a 48p the 48 volt system and that's because of the amount of solar that needed to come in i had to swap that out by far the most difficult part of the whole process was rewiring um, the inside uh, new inverter charge controller and wiring up to 48 volts. So we have two uh, SOK uh, brand batteries. They are 24 volts um, each. That's just what they came as, 24, not 12 volt. Um, and we were just running those guys. Excuse you, hey. Excuse you, that's mine. Give it back. No, kitty, no, no. Oh, this cat. But the main thing that made it so hard was really just taking the time to do it properly um, because 48 volts is still considered like a safe uh, working voltage if you were to get shocked. But the problem is that in a 48 volt nominal system, battery system, when those batteries are actually charged and almost like all the time, you know, you know that the charge, anything over like 10%, I think, they're above 48 volts and they're actually above 50 volts. And 50 volts actually, if you get shocked, has the ability to stop your heart. So you have to really be careful with what you're working with. And uh, fortunately we have a cutoff uh, switch and so I just kept that off made sure I was really paying attention to my diagram, drew up my diagram beforehand, and was following um, the safest practice I could. I actually taped all my tools with uh, electrical tape uh, to make sure that if they were to contact something that they're not going to complete a circuit. Um, and had uh, LZ just double check everything before I did it. So I've now gone through and I've done three different power system builds before, one for our van, um, our initial build here and uh, now our current build setup and so if you guys have any questions about uh, maybe like solar or how to get power to your van or your trailer um, let me know in the comments below I can point you to some resources if I can't specifically answer your question because I've had to use these resources to get my questions answered and to do learning as well uh, we all start at the same point and it's just about actually going through and, and uh, uh, doing the work and learning and so um, oh, Cat Ouch, you have sharp claws. You know that I'm not your scratching post Yeah, more about this one down here in next week's video 
I wasn't going to do a video on her, but she is forcing her way into our life. And so I think I need to uh, explain to you guys what's been going on with this cat and uh, what that's looking like for us. Um, it's kind of an interesting story. So we'll get to that next week. Until then, take it easy. Peace. What? Unless you're just the pretty kitty and just want to be petted, huh? Yeah. Aren't you supposed to be sleeping or something during the day? What are we going to do with you? Uh, good kitty. <laughs>